ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us tonight. We're so happy you're here. That's it. We're, we're out of the garage. We're back in the studio. We're allowed back in. That's right. So get, you know, get ready to be upgraded from an underwhelming show to a whelming show. <laughs> Prepare to be whelmed. But it's lovely to be back. It's so lovely to, to, to see just the small smattering of crew that we have here. But, the, you know, that's it. The doors are sealed. No way out now. We're going to ride this whole thing out in a bubble. Everyone got the email, right? Everyone's bought a few months of clothes. Yes? Uh, how are you, Rich? <laughs> What's happening here? How you, I love this. Oh, uh, thanks, man. It's, uh, it's feeling good. Can you, can you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and you're just going to wear this the well, whole show? No, I'm just wearing it. I mean, I, you know, I just want to see if it works. And it does work. You can hear me clearly. <laughs> we can hear you clearly if I want to feel like you're talking to me while I'm in the bar. <laughs> That's what it is. Well, it's glorious to see you, and I'm even happier now I can see your full face. Yes. Look at that. I'm back. It's gorgeous. Thank you. I've got one... Can I... So before we... I have one piece of beef here. What's happened to this desk? No idea. What's wrong? Uh, it's like a new desk. Oh, it got painted. We had a little time. <laughs> you what? There was a, we had a little time on our hands. It got painted. But I didn't want it painted. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't ask. <laughs> Look, at I used to, every day I think, oh... I genuinely used to look at the desk, and I think, when the show's done, when we're all packed, I'll take this desk. Because it had, like, a little mark where the coffee thing was, oh. and it felt like... Now it's like it's just from f***ing <laughs> Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> Who sanctioned such a move? I actually don't know. You're um... the exec producer of the show, <laughs> and I'm the host. Is this a Mancinelli decision? Ooh. I might have, uh, uh, What? Oh. Oh. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I might have to ask to look for a new director. <laughs> <laughs> and then I won't let you know. You'll just come in one day and your pass won't work, and I'll go, oh. <laughs> Sorry, I might have asked for a new director, Tim. Sorry, I didn't think to run it past you. It's not where you sit every... What if all the magic... And I'm using that term, you know, generously. <laughs> what if all the magic came from the desk? So far, it feels like it might have done. <laughs> we'll find out. Well, we've got a good show. We have a good show for you tonight. We'll be chatting to Paul Bettany and then Lenny James. Look at that. Two Londoners. Two Cockney geezers. Yeah, we'll have a right tear-up longers. <laughs> Look at that. Longers is on stage. You up for that? Right, Cockney tear-up? Let's have a tear-up. Yeah, let's have a... <laughs> Let's have a carve-up. I'm right, I'm into it. Let's have a carve-up. Ian's now. not here, but if you were here in the studio and you look at where he normally sits, it does look like Ian might have died. <laughs> 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 Just out of respect to Ian, we've, we're gonna, we won't turn the lights on for a week. <laughs> we should start laying flowers there. And... Oh, I used to love it when Ian was here. <laughs> Oh, Dave, look, Dave's crying. He's missing Ian so much. He's beside himself. I'm emotional. Yeah. Do you remember that time when Ian did that bit? <laughs> Let's play a best of Ian. Just to... <laughs> we'll soldier on without him. Ian's last act in the studio was painting this desk. <laughs> um, uh, well, guys, big news. You know what I'm going to say. Uh, Donald Trump just became the first president in history to be impeached twice. Yeah, wow. twice. <laughs> yeah. i got to say, I hope Trump supporters don't suddenly become angry and volatile about this. <laughs> you know what's crazy? So much has gone on that I, change, I don't remember what he was impeached for the first time. Is it Russia? Something to do with Russia? Uh, oh, Ukraine. Right, that's it. Two impeachments. Two impeachments. And just like Trump's sons, the second one is the most embarrassing. <laughs> Unlike the first time around, even some Republicans voted today for Trump's impeachment. At one point, Colorado Republican Ken Buck tried to explain away 
that ugly scene last week by comparing it to various Hollywood celebrities. Take a look. Robert De Niro said that he wanted to punch the president in the face. Madonna thought about blowing up the White House. Kathy D. Griffin held up a, a likeness of the president's uh, beheaded head. And nothing was said by my colleagues at that point in time. Come on, Ken. No one likes a name dropper. You know who told me that? Oprah. Uh, <laughs> also, getting punched in the face by Robert De Niro, I consider that to be one of the highest honours this country can bestow. <laughs> Nothing would make me happier than if you said, Robert De Niro's on the show, he's not going to chat, he's not going to do a bit, he's going to walk in and just sock you right in the mush. <laughs> At another point, Republican Lauren Boebert argued that the Democrats' attempt to impeach Trump was only creating more division, and she had some strong words for everyone. Rather than actually helping American people in this time, we start impeachments that further divide our country. I call bull crap. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I apologize to anyone who had to hear that. That is... That's crazy man. I'm just glad she took the time to speak on the floor today, because normally on a Wednesday, she's busy getting kicked out of a Sephora for yelling at the manager. <laughs> this time around, a Senate impeachment trial could be a bit rocky for the president. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is apparently pleased about Trump's impeachment because he thinks it'll make it easier to distance Trump from the Republican Party. It's, it's official. Mitch McConnell has turned his back on Trump, which means someone should probably help him, because usually when Mitch McConnell flips onto his back, it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's hard for him to get back up on the right side again. <laughs> now, this all seems promising, I know, but watch out, because there's actually nothing more disturbing than the sight of a pleased Mitch McConnell. <laughs> ah. And as if that's not enough, there was even more bad news for the president today. This morning, New York City announced that it's severing all contracts with the Trump organization. Start spreading the news. <laughs> One of the contracts included operating the carousel at Central Park. I feel like I should have asked this four years ago. What does the Trump organization do exactly? <laughs> it's like shady real estate deals, unsavory international transactions, and merry-go-rounds? <laughs> what would another surprising... What, what business would you be surprised by if the Trump organization organized that in New York? Like maybe a group of people that just say, like, Hey, hey, I'm walking here, just to perpetuate yes. the stereotype yeah. of New York. Because they're all play, paid employees of the city. Yeah. I know that. Yes, Just they to are. give it a flavor. Yeah. Hey, I'm walking here! <laughs> do you think I could play a good gangster in a movie? I think that you, you think, should. Do you think I could do that? You should. Hey, Tommy, relax and forget about it. <laughs> yep. They call him, they call him Short Arm Jimmy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Hey, God, forget about it. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> See, the magic was in the desk, Rob. I don't care what you say. <laughs> we blew it, I'm sorry. I think that's it now. I think this is us. <laughs> um, but, yeah, as I said... <laughs> they're taking the carousel in Central Park away from him. They're taking away the, the, the carousel. This is devastating news for Eric Trump. <laughs> but that's not all, gang. Even America's overseas allies don't want to have anything to do with the Trump presidency right now. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo just had to cancel his final trip abroad after top European leaders refused to meet with him. Here's how toxic Trump's administration is right now. Even the EU was like, EU. Ah, <laughs> oh, see? Well. Oh, oh, no. Oh. Oh no. oh, no. I'm going back to the garage. <laughs> I'm going back. Do you know why this doesn't work? It's got a reaction to the lacquer on this. Oh, <laughs> Tim didn't plug it in. <laughs> That's what masks are for. That's all I've got, Reg. Look, oh, look, it's a shady job as well. Look what's come up on <laughs> Look at that. Look at... 
No. Oh, it's a shady job. <laughs> oh, my lord. Well, soldier on, guys, but I'm... <laughs> Yeah, EU. Da Vinci? No. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd say this. I missed 2020. <laughs> <laughs> and like I say, EU. <laughs> Pompeo had to cancel his big trip abroad. I guess now, finally, he'll understand what life's been like for all of us these past ten months. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, in other news, after ageing in space for more than a year, SpaceX is now bringing a case of Bordeaux wine back to Earth. What? Yeah, Elon Musk, he's just got... He's got too much money. That's it now. He's using outer space as a wine cellar. <laughs> He's like, oh, we're out of space. What are we going to do with these? I've got six bottles. There's no room. Fire up the rocket. We'll keep it up there while we drink this. <laughs> Wine from space. That's one small step for man, one wobbly leap for mankind. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I was never sure about that joke either. I'm saying joke. That's me being very favourable. <laughs> but I did hear... I did hear this. This is a good joke. You'll like this. You'll like this. I wrote this. Same I did right. hear... I did hear that the wine tastes out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared to press them. And, <laughs> and finally, we want to show you this. A church in Brazil has opened a tourist attraction which is being called the world's worst waxwork museum because, well, the figures are so bad that visitors can't recognise the celebrities. Do you have an idea of how bad it is? This is supposed to be Marilyn Monroe. Oh, the scented wow. candle in my office looks more like Marilyn Monroe than that. And I've studied the other exhibits, and I've got to be honest, I don't, they wouldn't be so bad if they just labelled them properly. So at the, at the museum, they say that this is Elvis, right, when it's obviously Shawn Mendes. <laughs> they say this is Princess Diana, but wow. it's obviously television host Laura Ingram. <laughs> And finally, band, I want your guesses. Have you any idea who this is supposed to be? Right. Dennis the Rodman. Dennis Rodman. You think Dennis Rodman? Yeah, anyone else? Dennis uh, Rodman? Kareem Abdul. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You think? You think Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Maybe. Uh, you're all wrong. It's Nelson Mandela. <laughs> 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 Look at that. <laughs>